If you've ever been to the Apple store, the only items that are less than $100 are usually the cases and different smaller accessories or power blocks for your new iPhone. So how good of a $99 Bluetooth speaker can be, including all those intercom and interactive features that they advertise? Well, by the end of this video, we will find out. Welcome guys to Tahir's Tea channel. Tahir is here. I hope you had a fantastic week. Yes, I am talking about the HomePod mini, a surprise announcement during the iPhone announcement like two <laughs> announcements ago. There's been a lot of announcements, but yeah, it was a surprise announcement. It was only $99. It promised a lot and I had to find out for myself how that unit operates. And yes, I got them both. Let's do this. Hey Siri, tell everyone we're late. Let's go. On this channel, I primarily talk about people, places and tech. And if you're curious to learn more about different kind of tech impressions, tech reviews, or other interesting gadgets that are on the market or about to come live, well, check out this playlist over here or the end card at the end of the video. HomePod mini is not the first foray by Apple into the Bluetooth speaker world, or I guess the interactive speaker, AI supported speaker. I don't know these days who uses what kind of branding name that did come out with initial HomePod like a couple of years ago and yes it was an interesting design it essentially looked like one of those trash can max wrapped up in a little bit of fiber with the interactive screen on top and well between the 300 dollar price tag and limited set of compatible devices out there it wasn't a good proposition i don't know i looked at it and i literally glanced over it and never thought or considered purchasing the original home pod but then I see this HomePods mini being announced a couple of months ago. And well, between the fact that it is Apple quality product, it has the right audio system on board, at least it was advertised as a great audio system and it only costs $99. That piqued my interest, and especially in the world where now we're all working from home and we get to implement a lot of these kind of gadgets around our home offices. Well, it got me really interested to see whether the promise of two years worth of development in the ecosystem and more compatible devices out there was worth the risk. Hey Siri, tell everyone, we're late, let's go. The first thing that caught my eye when I took out the HomePod from this box, well, it did feel like a proper Apple product. You can feel and see the high quality and attention to details between the materials, the way the stitching is done and the way overall the product looks. Yes, that weaved pattern on the outside looks very modern from the distance, but once you get up close, you see those fibers create this interesting pattern and you feel the softness on the touch when you hold it in your hand. Yet, I would not recommend you to touch it too many times because I can see if you have it near, say a kitchen and there are a lot of particles in the air or God forbid some breadcrumbs or your kids are running around with their cookies, all of that stuff will stuck in between those fibers. So you do wanna make sure you put it outside of reach of anyone involved. The screen at the top is relatively interactive screen. It does change colors slightly between the white and this kind of like a rainbow pattern when you engage Siri and you only have three buttons. Technically two buttons that are clearly visible, plus and minus, plus increases the volume, minus decreases the volume. And then the space in between is technically that extra button. A single touch starts or pauses the audio that you're playing currently. Double touch skips forward triple touch skips backwards and if you press and hold you re-engage Siri and you can again re-engage Siri by just saying hey Siri. Finally as part of the aesthetic you have that braided cable sticking out of the HomePod mini and well first of all <laughs> great job Apple product photographers because in all the photos or predominantly all the photos you can never see this undetachable wire. Yes you cannot remove that wire it's hard plugged inside you do have USB-C on the other side and yes the wall plug is included in the box so you're fully set the only weird stuff is that the dark gray space gray I guess HomePod mini comes still with a white power block so I guess they decided to save a little bit of money there and not design the black one and overall it's a long wire in my case they both sit on a separate side of the same shelf and I can easily take both wires and I have enough length to take them all the way down to the outlet. Do keep in mind that if you're going after that Apple showroom or Apple commercial aesthetic and you want to make sure it looks completely independent, almost like it's its own <laughs> small device sitting on a shelf, well you have to be very careful in how you wire and snake that power cord away from the eyes of the onlookers and yes that gets me thinking that I'm long for the day when the small devices like this will have either enough battery power to be charged only like once a month 
or there'll be some form of a wireless charging that will prevent us from having to hide those wires to achieve that nice and modern aesthetic. Hey Siri, tell everyone, we're late, let's go. When it comes to features and functionality, your mileage will vary. I have the intercom function on it. My family did not care enough to test it, but yes, you can talk to other rooms if you have multiple of these HomePod minis thrown around the house or if you have the original HomePod. You can make it place calls if you have the iPhone connected to it, as well as you can control the smart devices throughout your house. Same way as your Google device or your Amazon device can turn on, turn off lights, can increase the temperature using a Nest thermostat or whatever the other smart thermostat you have in the house. Same exact functionality applies here. So I'm less excited about those two. And ultimately, I bought it for the same functionality that most of the people will care about, which is the quality of the audio media consumption, whether it's music, the podcast, or audiobooks. This is where we enter the realm of Apple strength, simply because my phone just connected like that. It took me maybe a minute with all the loading and the setup to install each one of those individually. So a couple of minutes tops for both of them to be fully functional. They connect to my phone. And the interesting thing that not many people called out, Apple Music, at least in my case, as an Apple Music user, it creates two different instances. So I can have one audio track playing through my phone and the other audio track playing to both of the HomePods minis. So this is an interesting functionality in my case, especially because I have not tried it, but I'm pretty sure I can split those HomePods into separate devices, put them in a separate rooms, and now I'll have three different instances that I can control for. I can see the situation where you have, say, an iPad somewhere sitting in a living room or hanging on the wall, and you use it to control some of your other smart devices throughout the house. And well, all of a sudden, now you have an ability to create separate music zones, create a united music zone throughout the entire house if you have all of those devices thrown around the house, or in my case, I like to have both of them because now they create this stereoscopic effect. I love how crisp and clean the sound is, whether I'm listening to heavy bass music or whether I'm listening to some sort of just regular pop music or even acoustic versions of certain songs, it's equally strong. These little guys do have a punch. I mostly listen to them at like 25 to 30% volume. And when you crank it all the way up, you can feel it. When I crank the sound all the way up, you can see that tape shifting the spot. And it happened a couple of times as I was shooting that B-roll because that's how powerful the sound is that the entire table starts shaking as I start slowly increasing the volume. Beyond the music itself, audiobooks, podcasts, any other kind of content that you want to play straight to those speakers, it's really limited by your imagination and compatibility of the app that you're running with an ability to share the sound through the Bluetooth connected devices, which is like every single primary app that's out there supports it. Hey Siri, tell everyone, we're late, let's go. Is Apple HomePod mini worth your hard earned dollars? Well, there are two different ways by which I can answer this question. First of all, if you are after a device that is under $100, that sounds the best in the marketplace and looks great, well, Apple HomePod mini is a slam dunk for you. There's no reason for you to look at uh, any of the other devices. I owned or still owe Echo Dots, Google Pods, Pox, whatever you call them. <laughs> I like them and they were interesting to use, yet I never stuck with them. And when it comes to really budget, yes, they're a couple or three times in one case cheaper than the HomePod mini. But when it comes to audio quality or the looks, they do not stand even close to this Apple device. And since this is an Apple product, you know that the quality is there and it will last you quite a few years and it'll be a couple of years before you ever have to consider the upgraded version of this device. And now the second way you can answer this question is really thinking about the strength of the ecosystem. Apple products on their own are good, but when they really shine is the fact that Apple builds the entire ecosystem in a way that every single device integrates well with the other one. I used to say that I'm not an Apple guy. I own the very first iPhone and I essentially been on the iPhones ever since. I'm switching them every two, three years or so, yet I never consider myself this like diehard Apple fan and I'm still Windows PC yet. As Apple kept developing their ecosystem, as they added more and more devices, 
I decided to entertain some of them and birthday comes around, my wife buys me Apple Watch and I notice how quickly and how well Apple Watch integrates with my iPhone. All of a sudden I'm looking at the tablets and iPad Pro is an amazing device and I happen to do a lot of artwork stuff so I get Apple Pencil. All of a sudden I'm up for devices from Apple. Then slowly but surely we start working from home. I need the headphones that makes it easier for me to quickly just plug them in <laughs> in my ears so to speak and jump on the phone call. AirPods Pro show up in my pocket. And now a few months or a couple of years later, I have multiple Apple devices. All of them get better and better at integrating with each other as the time progresses, as the new software comes up. So this is where Apple HomePod mini just finds a perfect natural fit within the ecosystem because it's yet another device that easily speaks to my watch, easily speaks to my iPhone, easily speaks to my iPad. These days I start my day when I walk into my work from home office, I can right away ask Siri to play me the news briefing from the Apple news on the Apple HomePod mini. Then I want to switch to music. I start playing music from my Apple music library. If halfway through the day, I want to listen to another news article or maybe a podcast, I switch to those as well. And all of those transitions are seamless. The installation is seamless. The connection is seamless. And all of this together brings that extra value that helps me justify the Apple tax, that extra cost that we know we all have to pay when we buy Apple products. Hey Siri, tell everyone, we're late, let's go. I hear some of you saying, but why won't I enjoy the open platform that Android phones offer? And to me, one of those things that I realized over time, as my free time shrunk with kids, this busy hobby, a busy nine to five, that's really nine, nine to five, sometimes eight to eight job, I wish I'd have time to tinker with my gadgets, but I don't. I need my devices to just work. I need them to integrate with each other, connect to each other easily, work seamlessly. I do not want to spend time trying to troubleshoot why my Apple device is not connecting to my Amazon device or my Amazon device is not connecting to my Google device. I measure my days in 15 minute increments. That's how busy they are. So every time I have to troubleshoot some misalignment in connection between the two devices from completely different brands that do not integrate well with each other, that's wasted time that I could have been spending with my kids. I could have spent messaging to my friends or relatives, or I could have been making more progress at my day job. That is why if you are after the great design, great sound, and sub $100 Bluetooth speaker, this is the one for you. Or if you're someone who's already using Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, you listen to the audiobooks, and you're well integrated within the Apple ecosystem, Apple HomePod mini is a no brainer. And it's not the question of if, but question of how many of these devices you want to buy. I get that ever closer feeling to the future of Jarvis from the Iron Man. When I get to walk into my work from home office these days with Apple HomePod mini sitting on my shelf, flick the lights on and say, Hey Siri, play me my news briefing. Lego is a line of plastic. And hey Siri, tell everyone we're late. Let's go. What do you think about Apple HomePod mini? Do you think you're gonna buy one of these devices? And what are other use cases you could find for a Bluetooth speaker of that kind? Well, share your thoughts and ideas in the section below. This is how Apple gets you. They integrate you into the ecosystem with the first device, then they slowly introduce you to another and another and another device. Then eventually you get a taste of that cross integration and it's really hard to give it up. When it all comes together, yeah, this is the walled in garden that everyone talks about. The more devices you buy, the bigger those walls in the garden are and harder it is to switch from the Apple products. As I said, it's hard to give up in the world where we count our days by every minute that ease of use when you can get a couple of devices from the same company and they just all work. Thank you very much guys for stopping by. If you're new to this channel, go ahead, hit the subscribe button and check out the videos in the backlog. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you very much for stopping by. As always, let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this video. And I will see you all next Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern on this very channel. By the time this video is out, we just had a Thanksgiving here in the United States. And first and foremost, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you are staying safe, being smart, and still enjoying a little bit of the turkey day. And for everyone who is out there, who is watching this video, who subscribe to this channel, this is what I'm thankful for. 
I'm thankful for the fact that I get to have this hobby. I get to enjoy doing it every week for the past like three and a half years. And every single time seeing the comments from you, the likes, opinions, and other thoughts on other videos I should make, well, that makes my experience that much better. And I hope every time you watch one of my videos, you enjoy a little bit something or you extract something new for your personal tech or professional life. Well, with that, happy holidays, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.